wanted to make sure it was crystal clear they heard it because I also worry that they're not hearing that at the negotiations in Geneva or Javed Zarif, their foreign minister, is not communicating it back to the senior leaders in Tehran. And Greta, if you look at Javed Zarif's response to our letter, it goes to show that we need to send the letter in the first place because it goes to show that he doesn't understand America's constitutional separation of powers and that while the president negotiates agreements, it's the Congress that approves agreements. We're trying to stop Iran from getting a nuclear weapon and Iran has to understand that the Congress will protect the American people from a bad deal as they have been doing for 200 years and as our founding fathers envisioned. All right, joining us now, folks, John Yu, law professor, UC Berkeley, the man uh, who uh, has been on this show many times and who has given us such, uh, such great uh, information, former deputy assistant, Attorney General at the Department of Justice and author of Point of Attack, Preventative War, International Law and Global Welfare. And um, welcome back, sir. Let me let me ask you, when John Steve. Kerry testifies the other day and says Congress can't touch this because it's not a legal document, what, what kind of game are they playing here with this agreement with Iran? I actually think Senator Clinton and the 47 senators who signed that letter flushed out what the Obama administration was really up to. They were trying to uh, hoodwink Congress essentially into saying, into getting this deal with Iran, saying it was legally binding, and then never sending it to the Congress for approval or the Senate for as a advice and consent as a as a treaty. And so, what Senator Cotton's letter had the effect of doing was saying, "Look, <clears throat> any deal that President Obama signs is only good as long as President Obama is in office." That's perfectly correct as a matter of American constitutional law. And that if it wants to be something more permanent or go, if Iran wants something more permanent, something that goes longer than the next year and a half, then they have to get something from uh, some kind of approval from Congress. Kerry had to admit that. And so the only way now he can get a deal with Iran is to confess that it's not really a binding deal at all. Yeah, so they, that letter had the, uh, basically, they called Obama's bluff and uh, they had to fess up and admit that Cotton and the senators were right. What's this report I heard that the U.N.? You know, how would this work, that the U.N. would approve this treaty, but not the U.S. Uh, Senate? It's a, <clears throat> I, I think the, I, the fact that this idea is being floated shows how desperate the Obama administration is getting and that they're going for some kind of hairy pass now on this agreement. Because, as you say, how can it be that the U.N. would approve an agreement that the United States Senate or the United States Congress wouldn't? As a matter of our domestic law, it doesn't matter whether the U.N. signs it or not. The Supreme Court's made clear that the decisions of the U.N. have no binding weight on us as a matter of domestic law. They, the U.N. can't change <clears throat> whether the Senate gets to approve treaties or not or whether Congress gets to lift or impose sanctions or not. All uh, this U.N. idea is about whether it could be a deal under international law, not under our constitutional law. And under international law, it would, be, it would really be unprecedented, I think, for the Security Council to try to impose a legally binding deal on the United States. Usually the Security Council says, please help. They don't ever really say, they don't really command, except in the case of Iran. You know, this is the other ironic thing, is that we're going to go to the Security Council to bless some kind of arrangement <clears throat> between the U.S. and Iran, when Iran is already in defiance of several years. <laughs> One Security Council resolution saying stop making nuclear weapons. It is, it is insane. I want to turn to Hillary Clinton, a uh, former colleague of yours at the Justice Department, uh, uh, Shannon Coffin, uh, was on Megyn Kelly and, and caused quite a stir by saying, and bringing up the fact that there's a document that every State Department worker, including Hillary Clinton, had to sign the day you leave the State Department. People go over your emails with you. You have to turn everything over when you leave, not two years later. The, the document says, I've turned everything over, blah, blah, blah. So he said if Hillary signed it and Andrew Napolitano backs this opinion up, it's most likely perjury. And it could be uh, uh, prosecutable, if that's a word. Uh, and, and if she didn't sign it, why not? So how do you view this? <clears throat> well, you know, Hillary Clinton, if you look, go back and remember, she got her start, start in politics as a young lawyer, on the Watergate committee in Congress. And she should have learned from watching President Nixon and Watergate that one thing that came out of that is that I, as a former government official, all the President Nixon as a former government official, we don't own the documents or the papers or the messages that we create. Those belong to the American people because we're working for the American people. All the papers and documents, emails that any of us officials created when we were in government 
belong to the United States for and we should and the United States keeps them in the archives for historical reasons so we can learn from our mistakes uh, which by the way I'm sure will be a rich treasure trove when we ever get to see Hillary Clinton's emails yeah. and the point is you don't get to take those they're not yours they're not mine you have to when you leave office you sign a, do- a declaration it's not just State Department it's every right. agency so John John we only have 30 seconds yeah. so it's not to cut you up but if she signed it and didn't hand them over for two years that that would be a crime I'm not sure whether it's an exact crime it depends what the form says but I think I think you are in violation of federal law. You could be prosecuted. I think that's right. All right. Listen, John, always great to talk to you. We'll have you back soon. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Steve. All right, John, you folks. When we come back, Harry Houck, we'll talk about Ferguson. Don't go away.